Let's get to India and England, shall we? As we sit here right now, the result in the fourth test is not known. But let's talk one. Come on. to the points. <laughs> we're going to go into the future shortly, Hads. <laughs> we're going to do something we've never done on Will I Talk. As we sit here right now, we don't know the result of that fourth test. But it's it's turned out to be another magnificent advertisement for test cricket because there's all these twists and turns within sessions, let alone days, let alone the whole match. However, how we got to where they were before the last day, Joe Root's the story. Uh, to a point, because he's obviously a listener of Willow Talk. He's taken on board <laughs> the advice of Brad Haddon, and he's just gone. He's woke up one day, and he, he went down to the coffee room and said, Baz, Stokesy, I just listened to Hads just before I fell asleep. I had a dream that he was actually here with us in India telling me that I just need to take, take my foot off the gas, leave the ramps back in the dressing room, and bat conventionally. And he did, and look what happened. All he did was put a high price on his wicket. Mm. He's the best player in both teams there. Um, he's got 11,000 runs. I, I think he just brought up his ninth or even more hundreds against India. He's got more than Steve Smith. He's 10th, actually. Mm. He's got more than Smith and Ponting. So all I want him to do is put a high price on the wicket. I, I love what Basball's bringing. Mm. And, and, and Basball's got him in this test match. They're, they're right in this test match. Yeah, so Duckett, Crawley, those guys, um, well, Bearstow can... to a point, they're, they're playing the same way, but well, Root the, just adjusted. The reason they're playing the same way is, is you just want to simplify the game. Mm. Like, like Crawley, is, he's averaging low 30s, Duckett's about 35, and they're, all they're trying to do is, is simplify the process from. They're just saying, play the way that's got you here. Mm. Take all the doubt out of it, and, and we'll back you to, to move the game forward. So they go out there now, and they've got a clear plan. But Joe Root, you can give him three or four plans because he can play to the situation. So with how Basball's playing, Stokes has done it as well. Stokes has done it through the um, the ashes. At, at times he, he's dug in and then he's turned a switch when the tails come in. So mm. they're good enough to take a couple of, of roles. The, the others aren't yet. Mm. So all, all Basball's doing is just clearing their decision making. Yeah, exactly right. And as you can see, they... Maybe Root did listen to you, but I'd like to think after 120 odd yeah. tests, he's probably just adapted. Oh, no, no, no. He's, <laughs> will is, I talk? Yep. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's high up on his one, rotation. Yeah, interesting about, you know, listening to Ben Duckett a couple of weeks ago oh, come yeah. out and say that, you know, we're changing the game. We and invented fast we scoring. We invented fast <laughs> scoring. I was waiting for him to come back out and say, well, we invented like adapting on, on difficult pitches. Yeah. They, um, yeah, the way they're, the way they're playing, if they do start. Just reining it back in a little yeah. bit and adapting a bit more, there can be a very, very good cricket team. Ben Duckett saying that to me was a bit like in Austin Powers when Dr. Evil said that his dad invented the question mark in Belgium or whatever it was. Like, come on, man. How can you verify that? But how can you say that's correct? Anyway. Well, but the thing about that, okay, what, what Ben Duckett said, you, get, you, you look at it and go, oh, you didn't see Slater, Hayden, Seaway. But if you look at it another way, McCullum's got him believing in his yeah, style yeah, and yeah. Duckett's actually done really well since he, he's come in and, and he's, he, he, whether he believes that or not, and sometimes things come out of player's mouth where they, you, you, you look at it back and think, Oh gosh, what, what have I said? <laughs> Get a bit carried away there. But, but at the moment, <laughs> He, he's doing a really good role for that's for the, what they they yeah. want to do. It's just when um, Root and Stokes they're better than that. They can play Stokes, all different roles. Stokes hasn't. Nah, even back to the Ashes, even that innings at Lords. He was watchful, watchful, watchful. And when he realized he was running out of friends to yeah. come in and help him, yeah. that's when he went berserk. He's got anyway. different gears. The others yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, the bowling performance of India, DC, I mean, I don't know how much you've uh, faced uh, Ravi Ashwin, Kuldeep Yadav, those guys, when you've, when you've been over there. But that looked like sorcery at times on yeah. that deck, that what they were coming up with. I haven't faced those blokes on on anything remotely like these wickets. I've played them mm. on, on some ordinary wickets, but, but nothing like this at, at that level. But yeah, 53 overs. Mohamed Siraj only bowled three overs. So the other three have rolled out 50. Yeah. And Ashwin, Jadeja and Yadav. It, um, it looked like pretty hard work. And that's the, the way of the, the value. And I, I've said it as well, Hads, about why I love um, Jadeja. He's one of my favorite cricketers because bat, good, energetic, Looks like a good team man. I don't know if that's actually the case. But with the ball, he not only bowls right at the stumps. Every ball, as you say, in India is an event. He makes it an event. He bowls quick. So then it allows the tempo of the game to be in the hands of India late in the day like it was at the end of day three. I, I just think he's a great cricketer. And even though the other two took the bulk of the wickets, 
Jardosia's role was so clear that he's invaluable because, I mean, it allows them to, to try things with their bowling lineup. What it allows as well is in, in the second, in someone like Cool Deep not have to worry about the scoreboard. Yeah. He, he can just come in and, and, and rip his leg. He used his wrong. And, and, and he was the big destroyer in the second innings. He, he got four wickets. But Jadeja was always a really interesting one to talk to after a test series because all the spinners would go over and say, oh, what are you undercutting the ball? You're going over the top. He goes, oh, I just bowl at the stump. Mm. And you go, no, no, no. What else do you do? He goes, I bolt the stump. The wicket will do it here. You guys think it's going to do something. What about the straight one? He goes, sometimes it goes straight. <laughs> <laughs> and you're out there batting. You think, is this the one that goes straight? Is that, you talk to him afterwards. He goes, what'd you do with that one? He goes, I just put it on the stumps. And that was the one that skipped. <laughs> Have you had much to do with it? Not, no, I haven't really spoken to him off the field. Played against yeah. him a lot in, in 2020s. But, but that's what it's like. You always feel like you're under pressure facing him. Yeah, you just don't know. You just yeah. don't know what's going to happen. And you can't hit it. Like you try and punch him down the ground, you don't get any runs because he's just so <laughs> athletic and mm. yeah. It, it was interesting playing him in, in a one day series. Um, we we're, were coaching over there thinking, oh, what are they going to bowl at the end? And I remember saying, just watch where Jadeja's fielding. And they go, what do you mean? If he's at deep long off, they're bowling full at the stumps. If he's at backward square or cow corner, they're going slow and into the wicket. They go, what do you mean? He goes everywhere where the ball's, where the ball's about. It's yeah. like Jordan Silk. Mm. You, you look where Jordan Silk's feel and you go, oh, Sean Abbott's gone slow into the wicket. Uh, you have another look next over when Benny Dorsch is fine. Ah, oh, you're going full and straight. Mm. So you, you just got to, everywhere he is, you know what they're going to bowl. Quick one on Bashir as well, the England, young England spinner that was picked um, for this one. And did okay, held up an end with the bat and obviously bowled pretty well. The story is that Ben Stokes saw highlights of this dude playing county cricket on social media and then... Not picked him on the basis of that. I'm sure he made a few phone calls and, you know, <laughs> talked to the people in the know. But that was the story that came out. I mean, have you ever heard of anything as loose as that, of, of, of guys being picked on the basis of a bit of vision that you've seen? No. It wouldn't happen, would it, in the professional game? No, sure. but you can understand. Uh, what he did do, he, he owned the stumps. Mm. He, he's, he's, he's tall, he bowls out the stumps, you get a bit of up and down. It's the same as when you, you Australia picked Stephen O'Keefe. We're going to Sri Lanka. Sometimes you've got to be brave in their selections. And that's the one thing the England team have done. They mm. won't second guess any selections at the end of this series. Well, as we sit here right now, it's on the cusp of day four. So, Hads, we're going to get into the Silver DeLorean. It's out the back. Marty McFly's waiting for us. We're going to hop in the time machine. Adam Peacock, it's over to you with a review of what happened in this test. Yeah, thanks very much, Adam. You're doing a great job in the studio. Keep it up, mate. But here we are in the future, and uh, it's done. That test match, 3-1 up India hads after, yeah, there were a few shaky moments, but as we said earlier, uh, every ball and event, and it was the case on day four. What in the end proved the difference? The calm head of the young blokes at the end or something else for you? No, I think it was the, the calm head of Schumann Gill uh, in the end. Um, I thought he, he his knock under pressure was, was was all class. I thought the captain did a really good job uh, up the top row at Sharma to to set the set the tone and and it looked like at one stage that they're just going to cruise to victory. They they won for eighty one and then then all of a sudden this this England team didn't go away. Um, they took some sharp captures in, in and around um, the the bat. They put the pressure um, on the Indian in batsmen and they got on a bit of a roll. They, they had. Um, India at one stage five for for a hundred, but once again it was at the young keeper um, Javal that that came out, scored runs under pressure. Um, he was thirty nine not out, but in the end it was it was interesting with Ben Stokes Fields at the end. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't have a lot of men around the bat where the majority of his wickets um, came around the the bat. Ollie Pope took a couple of catches. Anderson took a um, absolute screamer off, off Joe Root and, and folks uh, got rid of Rolt Sharma. But, uh, yeah, it was in, in the end, I thought Stokes might have been a little bit more aggressive uh, at, at the end of the game. Really easy for us. I mean, half, half a world away. Um, calm heads, not out there in the middle to say, should have, could have done this. However, I was sitting 50 runs in with that runway getting shorter all the time for England. And it was quite obvious that Jarrell was, was comfortable pushing forward and defending, and so was Shubman Gill, who was really, really patient by his standards, that there was no one either offside or onside in front of the bat. And, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it might have been the tactic that got them to that point, England, five for 100. But 
yeah, is is that one that's easy to get wrong in the heat of the moment, or they were just sticking to their plan and, and seeing if that worked? Yeah, I, I think what they were thinking is that the surface was was going to offer them a, a little bit more than it did. Um, hmm. I thought they attacked the stumps, hoping they could build dot ball pressure up on Gill. Um, one would eventually roll or, or take the surface and, and beat him on the outside. But the one thing both batsmen did really well, really, really well, actually, was trust their defence. And what you need to do in that situation, you, you need to get them to make a different decision. And sometimes with a, a bat pad offside, it, it, it's, it's not so much that he gets the wicket, but it just changes maybe the angle of the bat to try to push it past him and allows that ball to, to skid through the, the, gate, um, the gate. But, but both batters, um, in the end, uh, after being five for 100, to put on that 50-run partnership, mate, show great character for a couple of players so young. And it's another step forward. We saw a massive step forward for Indian cricket a couple of seasons ago here in Australia when they basically bought their B, if not C, team out and got it done in the middle of COVID. Now, you fast forward to now, and no Coley, Bournemouth arrested for this. So arguably, bat and ball, India's two most important players, you could say best, and they're gone, and England still can't get it done. It's two young guys. Oh, Shubman Gill's a bit more experienced than Jarrell, but they've just come into the side. Kale Rahul not available, and they still win. And they're 3-1 up with a chance to win 4-1 in Dharmasala, and you wouldn't count against that with Boomer coming back in. So the depth of Indian cricket, it's like this, you know, it's this big snowball rolling down the mountain. It's only getting bigger. It's a huge production line. Um, and Jarrell, the, the one thing I liked to, to about his game was they go back to that first innings where where India were in a lot of trouble. Um, he had that good partnership with uh, Cool Deep. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you just had to listen to Ravi Shastri on commentary. <laughs> it, and everyone's, oh, in, England are right in this game. And all he was saying is just get to 40 runs just get close to 40, have a lead of 40, watch this Indian team. And, and that's exactly what they did. And that partnership was probably the crucial one um, in the end. The young keeper had a great game. He got 90 and 39 not out. And uh, he, he was really, really sharp behind the stumps. So, yeah, they just don't go away, this um, this Indian team. But England tried hard. Um, mm. The surface, once again, I, I think brought them into the game. Um, a, a little bit, so their, their spinners uh, got got a lot out of it. Um, but in, in the end, it was uh, yeah, just the class of India in their conditions. Now, take the emotion out of this ne- next question. I'm going to ask you, Hads, if it's possible, and look at it as analytically as possible, um, and try not to be dismissive of the question. <laughs> but I, you can call it the Basball era. I'll call it the current era of England cricket. So, 50 over World Cup didn't happen for them. Disaster, in effect. Didn't win the Ashes and have got beaten in India. Has the shine gone off the the amazing start that this era got off to? I take two deep breaths here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? I, I, they've been in every test match. Yeah. Uh, oh, probably not um, the, the last test, sorry, but the, the, they won the, the first one. Um, th- this test that they were in, and if a couple of things go their way, um, that they win this test match. So you've got to remember Australia haven't won for how long over in India. It's the hardest place to, to go in the world. But what England are doing well, oh, there it is, mm. um, they're trying something different. Um, they've gone in with a couple of young spinners. Um, Hartley has been outstanding since he's coming into the team. And they're trying something different in these conditions. They're not just going, OK, let's play three fast bowls in a spinner. They've gone in with one quick at times and played the conditions. So, no, their era is not over. They're still trying to win cricket games. And India were just too good on this occasion. But England have have found a way to stay in this test match. Geez, that was a man fighting with himself like you would not believe, everyone. If you saw him when he was saying those words that he really did mean, they came from deep within, he got them out in the end. Well done, Hats. Proud of you. Well, to go back to that, though, <laughs> is India are now unbeaten in the last 17 series at home. Oh, wow. So you've got to be brave the way you played. And England, to their credit, have tried something different. That They've hmm. tried to... To play the conditions, they tried to at times put the pressure back on the 
um, on the Indian bowlers and, and make their batsmen play from behind the game. That they were behind the game um, when they had um, when they batted in the first first innings. It was mm. just a, a great partnership from the from the tail that got them back into the contest and some um, experienced bowling from Ashwin and, and Cool Deep um, to to get them back into the game. So England have been in the contest, and, and that's one of the hardest things to do in, in India. As you said, you, you don't win the last seventeen series in a row <laughs> um, with not without owning your home conditions.